Hey, this is Joe Price. I'm going to show you how I help someone find 100 names uh, to add to their family tree. Uh, I have, uh, this is actually a true live demo. Uh, I just reached out to one of my research assistants, and so I'm going to be uh, using him as an example here. Uh, and so this is uh, uh, Laren. And uh, so he gave me his username and his helper number. And right after this video, I'll change the helper number so you won't be able to uh, you know, replicate this exactly, but this is the experience. So notice that once I've typed that in, it tells me here I'm, I'm helping uh, Laren. Edwards. Now the first thing I like to do is just take a look at their tree. And so here we have their tree. I'm going to put it in fan chart mode. And this gives me an idea about like what uh, kind of what I'm dealing with. So this is a very complete tree, you can see. Uh, there are some of uh, those blue are record hints that I could do. And notice that if I kind of scan out here, uh, you know, I've got some opportunities. Maybe I could find uh, James's parent. Oh, so never mind. So actually, he has a very complete tree, and that's okay. So some of the people you're going to help have complete trees, uh, some don't. Uh, the things I'm going to show you are going to work for both. Um, so the first thing I always do is I go to familysearch.org slash campaign slash hints. Okay, so this is a hints campaign that was set up by Family Search. And what I'm going to do is I'm only going to show... Um, the ones that haven't been attached. And then I love to focus on 1900 census, uh, 1910 census. So notice here, here's a 1900 census, here's a 1900 census. So those would be the ones that I would start with. Uh, so I hit review record, and I come in here, you can see it's a census record of Peter with his wife and his kids. And then over here, I have other record hints for Peter um, that are basically hints based on this record. So I'm going to hit review and attach record. And I come in here, and now the most important decision I have to make is if these two people are the same person. Okay, so notice here we have Peter C. Klein, spelled a little different, but um, Ohio, 1844, living in the exact same place where he was living in 1850. Okay, so I think this is a really good match. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna go with it, though if it turns out to not be a good match, we could always come back and undo what we've done. So the cool thing about this census record is now I've discovered the name of his spouse. Now notice I have some possible duplicates here None of them are like super clear because none of them have good information about Jenny's birth place or state. Um, so we're going to create a new person, but this gives me a clue that maybe I'm going to have to merge some duplicates uh, later on. But I think it's better to err on the side of inclusion um, and then uh, merge duplicates later than it is to just completely leave someone off of the tree. Okay. So notice again here I've got you know pretty close match. I've got this Russell E and I've got this Everett. So that's probably the same person. You got October 1895. So actually, and then remember Jenny Stone was what we were seeing before. So in this case, actually, even though I don't have a perfect match on the first name, I could hit create new person. In this case, um, I feel pretty confident given that it's the same birth month and year that we will uh, we will select that person. Um, now here I just have to wait a second for source linker. And at any time, if it takes uh, too long, you can always refresh and then uh, come back here, okay, so there we go, okay, so now uh, that is attached, and then I'll see the same for Walter, and again, here, do you see how we're getting a good uh, match, and we're actually getting two good matches, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this ID, I'm going to select this one, okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here into Walter, and then I'm going to come over here. Well, notice then here's that possible duplicate. If that didn't show up, I could also come down here to merge by ID and paste it in there, and then we'll merge it. Now, this video is not really about uh, merging duplicates, but um, it is a really uh, useful thing to do because what you want to do is help make the experience as awesome as possible for the people that you're helping. So we're going to merge those two duplicates together. So uh, just to recap the first part, and I might spend a little time then here merging these other duplicates, cleaning this family up. But the key thing is these the hints that you get from this campaign are really awesome. Uh, let me just show you one other example. Uh, so here we're going to hit review and attach. And uh, so notice here we have Codwell, Codwell, Kentucky, month matches up. And we do this, I'm going to link that. Okay, so notice now we also picked up a birth info, and then we, we missed a kid. Okay, so uh, I always feel a huge amount of happiness when I bring a kid back into the family. I think of times when I've, you know, when we left one of our kids behind on a camping trip, and how happy we felt when we found them. That's, that's what's happening right now, is we just um, brought that child back into the family. And so notice there, I just fixed that birth year. Um, and now the other thing is then I could also maybe look and see if there's other records. So let's 
take this. So basically the record I get right here becomes a starting point to discover other things about this family. Okay. Let me show you the, the next thing I do. So that's using campaign hints. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can learn more about this family um, using Ancestry.com. Okay. This is interesting. It looks like he might have showed up twice in the census. Let's just see. Yeah, it looks like he was twice in the census. So we could uh, we could add that as well. I'll do that in just a second. Okay, so now um, what we're going to do is take a look over an Ancestry, and you need to be you need to have an Ancestry account to do this, and you need to be logged into Ancestry. But notice that once I hit that Ancestry button, it pre-populates the search fields, and now I start to get a lot of records uh, for that person. So here's actually kind of a cool record um, because you can see now. I can get his exact birth date. Okay. I can also get his middle name. We knew his middle initial was B before. Now we know that it's, uh, and I'm going to keep, well, one thing I can do is I can look across the multiple spellings. Actually, it looks like he spells it with an I more often. And let's just see if it's two T's. Yep. Uh, now, cool thing here is notice we also have this find a grave record. And so uh, notice that you're getting a bit of year creep in his, or it kind of bounces around just a little bit. So we're going to just put in his death year here. And notice that as I put this information in, see how I'm getting more and more hints over here. So I was able to use Ancestry to bring information over and then use those to um, grow the tree. Now, one thing about Find a Grave is sometimes it'll have uh, spouses and children. and You can use that information. But the thing I wanted to show you, and notice I've got a lot of record hints I could do. If I come down here, it has Find Others. So if I click on Find Others Who Are Researching Emmett, Notice that I get Emmett in a tree. These are public member trees. These are people on Ancestry that are doing research about the same person. And if I hit the seven trees button, I can see all the different ones. And I can see how many sources, how many people. So this one's fantastic because you can see I have a spouse. I have a lot of sources. Um, so the person that has created this profile has done a really careful job in uh, documenting uh, Emmett's life. Um, so now I can bring in information that I have from over there. I have a more exact birth place. I can, I now know he died in Illinois, so I can put that in there. And then the cool thing is I now know that he was married to this person. And so I can bring that over. And so I find that between using the hints, oh, that's so weird. Uh, huh, let me, I had not, I haven't seen that before. So let me just go back to English. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there. And I'm so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trust the information on this public tree and Ancestry as a starting point. Um, and then I'll use sources to help me back that information up and fix anything that might be wrong. Because the honest truth is, um, you know, this person that's created this public tree on Ancestry, we'd love for them to create their tree on family search. And if so, then this is the same information that they would bring over. So we're just kind of helping use that information to improve the family tree. Uh, now notice that once I do that, I have other places I can expand. I have her parents, I have her other husband. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can view the tree for this and see kind of what direction it goes. Um, so let me just show you that. Um, so if I come over here to tree search, I can type in Mabel. Uh, right there. And so that'll take me to the part of this tree that corresponds to this person. And um, that helps me kind of see which direction I can grow. So you can see that like the pool part is a little limited. If I come over here, I can click on Emmett Turner and click on this thing and see where his tree goes. So you can see that one's a little limited. Emmett had this other spouse that has uh, this tree. This gives you an idea about where, where you're likely to be able to grow. Well, I hope you have a great experience. So just to recap uh, what I do, the kind of three steps I do when I'm helping someone is first I look at their tree and see if there's some natural places where I can push out. I do the campaign hints so I can find some record hints that are going to help add new people to their tree. And then I look on Ancestry to see if there's any public trees uh, for which I can maybe bring some of that information over to the family tree and help uh, someone have a bigger, uh, more connected uh, family. So thanks for all your help with this. Um, and feel free to share your own ideas with others. And uh, Ultimately, what our goal here is, is to make it possible for everyone to find their family and be fully connected. We're all part of one family, and as we grow the tree and connect it, uh, we're going to start to see those connections more easily.